Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and this study taught by Brother Stephen Miller titled The Rejection of the King. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can send those by email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com or you can send them by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. That email address again is bbbfohio at yahoo.com and the mailing address is P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we begin this study taught by Brother Stephen Miller titled The Rejection of the King. This is part one of two. So, yeah, it wasn't recording the singing, was it? Okay. Great. Yeah, you're on there. He will, don't worry. <laughs> That would be that would be good. So you guys missed the best part. We did Jesus loves me. Seriously, it's a kid's song. And then blessed be the name, which we just destroyed. I mean, not in a good way. It was in a bad way. We we did terrible. Except for um, except for you guys. You guys did good. So okay, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and pray and then get started. And then hopefully you guys will learn something. I'd really tried on this one, like unlike the other ones. Lord, please uh, help me tonight. I, uh, God knows that, uh, God, you know that, that I'm, you know, not, uh, sufficient to the job. And Lord, help the, uh, help the people to learn what, uh, they're supposed to be taught and help me to teach what I'm supposed to teach. And Lord, uh, please bless the people. Bless the teaching. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started. Go ahead and turn to John. Uh, 4:22. So I'll turn there also. What we're gonna, what I'm gonna teach on tonight, and hopefully we'll get through it in 32 minutes. So I'll give us till 7, no 8:20, and then I'll wrap it up. I promise. I just lied. So okay. So John uh, 4:22. And uh, what we're going to teach on tonight, or what I'm going to teach on tonight, and actually you guys will probably have to help me with this one. So any questions, just feel free to interrupt and uh, ask a question if you need to, or make a comment. I, actually, that kind of makes things funner. Funner. Yeah. It makes things more fun. So John 4.22, and uh, I'll go ahead and read it. John 4.22, it says, Ye worship, ye know not what. Uh, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So I want you to, uh, to see there at the end, it says that salvation is of the Jews. What, we're gonna, what I'm going to teach on tonight is the rejection of the king. So we're going to document the rejection of the king by the Jews. They're going to reject their Messiah. And uh, so God's chosen people are the Jews. He chose them for salvation, for the world, and I'm sorry, so God's chosen place for the salvation of the world is, and I'm sorry, is the Jews, and it's for the Jews. So Israel is God's chosen people, not the Gentiles. So just, uh, just for the people on the internet, Gentiles are, because uh, I know you guys know what a Gentile is, but Gentiles are non-Jews. The Bible says that there's, uh, there's three different classes of people in the world. There's Jews, Gentiles, and the Church of God. That's the people in the world right now can break up into those different classes of people. You've got Jews, Gentiles, and the Church of God. And if you're part of the Jews or part of the Gentiles, you're going to die and go to hell. So the, the whole point is to get from the Jews and the Gentiles, you get saved, and then you're part of the Church of God. So, Jews, Gentiles, and Church of God. So what we're going to teach on tonight, or what I'm going to teach on tonight, is the rejection of the king. And uh, go to Second uh, Samuel uh, chap chapter 7, and we're going to look at uh, the promise that God made to, uh, well, to the Jews. So God promised a nation 
to the Jews, 2 Samuel 7, 12. And we're going to see, you can go ahead and write down, we're not going to cover it, but you can also write down 1 Corinthians, or I'm sorry, 1 Chronicles 17, 11 through 14, and then Psalm 89, 33 through 37. You can write those down, and that's also a promise that God made to the Jews that uh, he would uh, give them this kingdom. So... Okay, so uh, First Chronicles 17, 11 through 14, and then Psalm 89, 33 through 37. Okay, so Second uh, Samuel 7:12. Where is? So Second Samuel 7:12 it says, "And when thy days be fulfilled, and I'm in the right place, right? I always think I'm in the wrong place." And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So this is God promising that he will establish the throne of David forever. And uh, eventually... That's where, uh, that's actually the throne of Christ. Christ will sit on this throne. Obviously, we know that during the millennium, this is the physical kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. So the kingdom of heaven is, uh, is a physical, literal kingdom. It's not the kingdom of God. Um, the kingdom of God is actually what we become part of when we get saved. So he's actually talking about the kingdom of heaven. And actually, go to uh, Matthew chapter 10. So... In Matthew chapter 10, it talks, you know, there, there's this uh, thing about the kingdom of heaven. And that's, what, uh, that's what's being established, is he's going to rule and reign with this kingdom forever. And this kingdom, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. In 10.5 it says, uh, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They were and it says, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. They were considered uh, uh, filthy. Yes. The form of yeah, the, the Samaritans and the Gentiles were considered filthy, lowborn, not, not good people. Not, not educated, exactly, yeah. But uh, also in uh, verse 7 it says, uh, And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven was not to be preached to the Gentiles, and it was not to be preached to the Samaritans. It was for the Jews only. We see that the kingdom of heaven is for the Jews, not the Gentiles, not the Christians. All right, so we can move on. Actually, so there's that the kingdom of heaven is promised to Jews, and it is also uh, commanded, Jesus actually commanded it just for the Jews. Salvation, national salvation, is for the Jews. And actually, uh, at that time, he said, don't preach, don't preach to the Gentiles, and don't preach to the Samaritans. All right, so they weren't, Samaritans, us, the Gentiles, are actually not able to, at this point, we would not be preached to at all because this salvation was not for us. Okay, and then uh, we're going to talk about, so, so that the kingdom was promised to the Jews, and it was actually, uh, it was actually, uh, prophesied to the Jews. John the Baptist actually came along and confirmed this prophecy where the, the Jews would get this great kingdom and it would be led by Jesus Christ. So the, uh, we're going to talk about the rejection of that king. So go to, uh, you're in Matthew, go up to Matthew chapter 27. And so we're going to talk about the first rejection. So there's, there's um, in the Bible, there's five distinct rejections of the king. There's five rejections. And the first one 
is uh, pretty much the, it's the famous one, everybody, it's a no-brainer. The first one is the crucifixion. So up here in uh, Matthew uh, 27, verse, uh, go up to verse 22. And uh, in verse 22 it says, uh, Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, that's talking about the people, there's a whole group of people, so they all say unto him, let him be crucified. So there's this mass of Jews there saying, crucify Jesus. And said, so, okay, and then it said, and the governor said, uh, what, why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail, or I'm sorry, that he could prevail nothing, but that rather tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of this blood. I'm sorry, it's saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. And actually, go ahead, uh, we'll read uh, verse 25. This is a good one. It said, Then answered all the people and said, This blood is on us and on our children. This is the Jews talking. In a, the, the, leaders, the leaders were talking, and they, they were saying what the people believed. And they said, this blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, is on us and our children. So that is the, the people rejecting Jesus. The people got up and they said, that's fine. We want, uh, uh, we, we want this Christ, this Jesus Christ, killed. We want him crucified. They're actually trying to, because crucifixion is actually a Roman thing. That's what Romans do. But they were, they put him up on a, they wanted to put up on a cross. They wanted Pilate to kill him. And Pilate said no, because that would be unjust. And he said, you, you guys do it. If you guys want it done, go, go do it yourself. And he said, this blood will not be on me. Now he could have stopped it, so he does bear guilt, but um, that is the first rejection of the king. So, Go ahead and uh, skip up to Acts. We're going to talk about repentance and pardon offered. Actually, go to, uh, before we do that, go to Luke 23. I'm going to show you something really, really cool. So Luke 23:34, if I can find it. Luke 23:34. And uh, the Bible says, and this is Jesus up on the cross. He's actually making, he makes eight statements while he's on the cross, and this is one of them. Jesus said, I'm sorry, this is what the Bible says. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So this was actually talking about the Jews. Jesus was actually pleading for the forgiveness of the people who are killing him. That's so, the exact word that you just said right there to forgive them, mm -hmm. forgive them what they're doing. The exact same words Stephen said when he was killed. That's right. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna see that. So Jesus actually actually Stephen is a type of Christ. So it's um that, that's completely true. So this uh, this forgiveness though, if Jesus wouldn't have said this. I, I theorize, I always, I always like to make theories like, what if Jesus wouldn't have asked for forgiveness and then Jesus would have died? What would have happened? And I just think, well, Revelation chapter 5. Jesus would have died he, and he would have come back and killed everybody. And just, you know, we wouldn't have had this, uh, this church age where Jesus actually, he was pleading to his father for forgiveness. So, praise the Lord for Jesus' forgiveness. So, Go ahead and uh, go up to, uh, it's just a theory, there's alternate histories that, uh, that people like to come out with, and I think that that's, that surely could have, would have happened. If that verse wasn't in the Bible, well, Revelation chapter 5 would have happened, you know, 2,000 years ago, so in all of the book of Revelation, I think. So go, to, go up to Acts 2.38. So Acts 2.38 is probably one of the most misapplied uh, verses in the Bible. And if you want to be a heretic, you'll spin around Acts 2.38 all day long. And the reason why is because we saw that uh, the kingdom was offered to the Jews, salvation is offered to the Jews, 
the kingdom is only for the Jews, salvation is only for the Jews, and then the Jews rejected their king, they killed him, and it's all the Jews. The Jews, the Jews, the Jews. No Christians yet. No Christians at all. Um, there actually there aren't Christians mentioned in the Bible until, I think, Acts chapter 11 or something like that. So in Acts 2.38, uh, we're going to see uh, repentance is offered, <clears throat> repentance and pardon is offered for the, uh, for the Jews. So Peter's preaching, and uh, in Acts, uh, where am I at? Acts 2.38 said, the Bible says, um, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. What was that sin? What were those sins? He's talking to Jews. He's talking to the same Jews who just killed Jesus. Those same people. He's saying, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The sins are what they did. That, that sin is putting Jesus up on the cross and killing him. And it says, uh, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to the children. Get that? It's unto you. See, remember this, this you know, give, it said, oh, kill, kill Jesus. His blood will be on us and our children. So Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with many other words did he testify, this is talking about Peter, did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. And, uh, okay, and uh, they that gladly received, received his words were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So they got baptized for their sins. All right, so go up to Acts uh, chapter 3. So just the next page over. And we also see, so that was the people. So remember, remember how all those people were gathered together and then they, uh, they said, hey, we, uh, we want to kill Jesus. Well, that was the people. The people uh, repented of their sins. And then now we have the leadership. So there were leadership, there, there was people in leadership there. And uh, so go up to uh, verse 20 and... Uh, this is talking about Peter, and uh, it says, and uh, actually verse 20, yeah, it says, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens, I'm sorry, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by his, I'm sorry, by the mouth of all his prophets since the world began. This is, yeah. Um, and then it says, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever ye shall say unto you. Go ahead and... Um, Wait a minute, I think I might be in the wrong place. Anyway, but uh, go ahead and go down to uh, 26, or, yeah, I'm sorry. Go to, down to uh, verse 25. It says, Ye are the children of the prophets, and the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. So, Peter's preaching to the leadership here. He's preaching to them about, uh, about what just happened, about the people repenting and about the people being offered pardon and then the people actually repenting. And so there's repentance and pardon offered and the people received it and the leadership received it. And so now uh, go up to uh, Acts chapter 7. So we're going to talk about Stephen stoning. In Acts chapter 7, is the uh, the second rejection of the king? So we got the first one, which is actually killing their king. The Jews killed their king, and then we see that uh, there was a bit of a change. Then uh, they were being forgiven for 
their sins to get forgiven, they would uh, have to repent and be baptized. And then uh, Acts uh, 7, 13 through 15, it says... um, Um, 759. Okay. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, receive my spirit. So that's when, uh, when Jesus was stoned, the people, uh, they, uh, they got together and, uh, they, the, the Jews got together actually. And, uh, I think Paul was there. He was called Saul at the time. And, uh, the, they killed Stephen, who was actually a type of Christ. Stephen was preaching to them, and he was preaching to them repentance, and uh, he was preaching to them uh, to repent and believe on Jesus, actually. And uh, so that's the, uh, that's the second rejection. We don't really have time to go into that much further. But then we have, um, we have a, also more of a change. So we go up to uh, Acts uh, chapter 9. Just keep on flowing through Acts. So we have uh, now because of that, because now the uh, the Jews rejected their king once, and then they rejected their king twice. Now God's changing things. So he's uh, now he's called Saul, this uh, this Jew who was actually he was out there killing people. He was out there killing other Jews because they believed on Jesus. And so now God's starting to change things. So because of this rejection, God is actually changing things. So the, uh, up, go up to uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 5, it says, uh, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Uh, it, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So you have to keep in mind what Saul was doing. Saul was there at the stoning of Stephen, and he actually, we we call Saul a murderer because he consented unto the death of Stephen. And uh, he he actually, uh, you know, he didn't necessarily have to say, go kill him, but he could have said, stop. Just like Pilate could have said, stop. He could have said, stop. And uh, so Saul was one of these, he was a bad dude. And he, uh, Jesus said, why do you, you know, why do you persecute me? You know, you're persecuting me. Well, how do you persecute Jesus? You persecute him through the people of God. You know, obviously you can't, you know, well, how does the devil persecute God? By hurting us, you know, how, you know, by hitting us on the head, by, you know, making your neck hurt and stuff like that. So... <clears throat> So that, that's uh, God changing things. Now he's going to raise up Paul, which then becomes, uh, the, actually Saul, this guy Saul, he changes his name to Paul um, because the, you know, the Greek letter P um, stands for the C so in our English alphabet. So P actually is, uh, is a reference to Christ. So Paul puts the P in front of his name and, and becomes Paul instead of Saul. So go ahead and go up to uh, Acts uh, 13. So God's changing things, and we're going to see the third rejection of Jesus in Acts chapter 13. Go up to 1344. 1344. Um, And it says, uh, In the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God, But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake, I'm sorry, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul. Notice now it's Paul this this time, contradicting and blaspheming. So they were contradicting Paul and blaspheming. Actually, they were, yeah, they were contradicting Paul and blaspheming Jesus Christ. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. These are the Jews. It was necessary that it should have been first spoken to you. But seeing ye put, but seeing ye put it for you, I'm sorry, but seeing ye put it 
from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So this is actually a turning from the Bible. It's actually God turning from the Jews to the Gentiles. Now this salvation is going to be for the Gentiles. You've got to keep in mind what happened in Acts chapter 10 also, where uh, Peter was there and God laid out the, uh, the uh, banquet, the carpet, I think it was, or the sheet, with all the, um, with all the animals, all the unclean animals. And then God said to Peter three times, kill and eat. And then Peter said, no, I'm not allowed to eat these unclean animals. But God said, no, what I made clean is clean. So he's talking about the Gentiles. So now the word of God is going to be preached to the Gentiles. Now this, uh, this salvation is going to be for the Gentiles. And there's actually a split with the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. So... Um, yeah, we won't actually. So, okay, go down to verse uh, 48. It says, uh, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word, I'm sorry, glorified the word for the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. So these Gentiles, they didn't, they didn't turn Christ away. They, they said, yes, we, we love this. We want to get saved. And these Gentiles actually turned to the Lord these dirty, rotten Gentiles, these dogs is what the Bible calls them, Gentile dogs. So that's what you and I are. We're dogs. And back then, the dog was not a very good thing. It's not like today when you got a little, these little, where they have now these, these poodles mixed with shih tzus. They call them little she poos. Yeah, everybody loves dogs today. It'd be more like saying, you Gentile cats. Ooh, that's bad. Or, or you... Ye Gentile rodents, rats, Gentile rats. Yeah, actually, yeah, that is a good that that analogy because you know obviously today we love dogs. Dogs are man's best friend, but back then, you know, what what's the worst thing that happens after your dog throws up in the living room? He eats his vomit. That's right, the worst thing. What's what does what does Sebi do? Little little Sebi. We're not going to talk about. I'm going to talk about it. Dogs are disgusting animals. I can just tell you that. Jenny's not here to reprimand me, but she will probably watch the tape. Let's just say that they're not, they're not clean animals. And that's what, that's what God calls us, Gentile dogs. So go to uh, Acts 15. Actually, we won't go there, but uh, in Acts 15, because it's a big, long chapter, and I'd have to read the whole thing, and that, that'll get ugly. So in Acts 15... Um, we then have more of a change. We have the council is held at Jerusalem, and you'll have to read that on your own time. Um, but uh, Gentile missionaries are sent, and a letter is sent to the Gentiles from the Jews, um, talking about, hey, you know, you, you guys can be part of the uh, part of the body of Christ, of course, because you're you're what, what's happening? You're being filled with the Holy Ghost. So how are we to say no? This this can't happen. And uh, they're told, hey, no, you don't have to follow the law. You don't have to become a Jew to get saved. What you have to do is believe. And that's what these guys were doing. And actually, through, throughout the, uh, throughout the book, book of Acts, there were different stipulations. But by the time, uh, by the time Acts is over, you believe. That's how you, that's how you get saved. You just believe. So um, go, to, um, go to Acts chapter 18. Go to Acts 18.4. And we're going to talk about the fourth rejection of the king. So Acts 18.4. And uh, I turn straight there, so I'll give you guys a little bit of time. But uh, the fourth rejection of the... Oh, Blue Jackets aren't playing tonight. It's fine. They won last night. It was great. Acts 18.4. Um, it says, uh, And he reasoned in the synagogue. It's talking about Paul also. Excuse me. It's talking about Paul. He went back to the Jews. It says, And he reasoned in the synagogues... Er, I'm sorry, in the synagogue every Sabbath.